Hello YouTube, it's me, Video Gamer, and today I'm bringing you guys part 4 of my drawing technique slash style. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to color one of my drawings digitally. Here it is. And it was my drawing of Bricks to Rack you saw me working on last time. I actually saved a scan of it for this purpose exactly so I could work on it on the computer because there's a lot more you can do on the computer uh, than you really can with colored pencils. I'm more used to using colored pencils than anything else, but you can also color digitally and I'm just about to show you guys how to do that with a program called paint but here you can see my drawing here uh, we got a lot of dots and a lot of mess ups all around you can even see some of the pencil left and this little mark here that I regret ever having made on the paper uh, we're gonna open up paint here uh, paint is only for Microsoft as far as I know but I'm pretty sure Mac probably has a substitute paint or something but we're gonna go to open and we're gonna grab our picture Wherever it may be. And as you can see, we got a pretty good picture here, but we can't really simply take the paint bucket tool, take the color red, and just paint. No, we can't do that. We're not allowed. It's an invalid action. We're gonna hit Ctrl Z a lot of times so we act like that didn't happen. So, uh, uh, we can't really work with this at the moment, but I'm gonna show you guys a cool technique that paint has. I don't know if anything else has it, but if it does, here's how you'll be able to find it. Go to Save As. And we come on down here to where you pick the file type. And we're going to choose this one here at the top called Monochrome Bitmap. What this is going to do... Well, wait. Let me save this as a different file first. Just because. And we're going to save that. We'll call it Edit 1. And it comes up with this message. Just hit OK because it's doing what we want it to. And what this will do is it will get rid of all the other types of colors on your drawing. Except for the actual... Uh, white and black lines on here. And if you zoom in, you can see that it kept the lines really real clear. But at the moment, we've only got these weird gray shades of color and such. So we're going to zoom back out and we're going to do another save as. But this time, we're going to save it as a 24 bitmap, which is the standard bitmap, I suppose. We're going to save it as edit 2. And now that we've done that, our lines got a little bit better and we have colors again I think test yep we got our colors back alright that's the important thing okay by uh, closing and reopening paint I was able to get back my normal color palette sorry about that but here we go um, now before I start actually coloring brick I want to show you guys how you can actually clean up your drawing a little bit more than what the uh, software already did for you see this mark I made here that I really don't like anymore BAM! It's gone. Just like that. Fantastic. I can get rid of these little guys down here just by using the select tool which is right there and coming around it's just like, hey, see that? BAM! Gone. No more little annoying stupid dots that I hate. Alright, the second thing we're gonna start on here is we're gonna start laying down uh, base coat colors like I showed you guys how to do in part 3 because I'm pretty much going to use the same principle here, the only difference being that I'm using a digital tool instead of anything else. You're going to see the colors are a lot more even this way, and it also makes it look quite professional if you do it this way. But the problem a lot of times I have is that my lines here aren't always all that great to start off with, so i got to fix them. You can do that by using the pencil tool. If you see any open spaces, you gotta f close them up. And I think that was all on the hair. We're gonna take our color, take the paint bucket, and just dump it all on there. And we got a good starting color for Brick's hair. I might change it. Let's see, I will change it. And so, basically we're gonna use the same process. I'm just gonna color everything uh, that's supposed to be yellow on Brick yellow. As you can see, there's a lot of trial and error involved uh, when doing this because you have to make sure that all your lines are closed and if they're not, it totally spills paint onto the entire drawing. And it's very difficult to see these things first off, so you gotta really check your edges very well. Very good. I can't speak, I'm sorry. Alright, and uh, what we're going to do here 
is we're going to instead of making black lines for this part we're going to do a red line and this is going to match the color we're going to lay down and now we're ready to begin the quote unquote shading process which is what i do um it's going to be a little bit different here you're going to notice that our colors are going to be a lot more crisp uh, just because it's paint so it's going to seem very graphic what you see in a lot of comics whatnot uh, first thing I'm really gonna start off on is Brick's hair. I'm gonna show you how we do that as an example. We're gonna go back and we're gonna use the yellow that we used for Brick's hair originally and we're sort of gonna scale it down, add a little bit of orange to it, and we'll get a color about like that. So that's what we're gonna do first. And now we're going to take the pencil and what we're going to do is we're going to sketch in here a shade line for Brick's hair, sort of following his hair. Like that. Make sure it's closed up here. And we're going to color this the darker orange. The shading is very clean and cut to find here, just like you see in a lot of animes and comics. And that's just the style I'm going for for this drawing. I'm not trying to do any uh, crazy good shading because with a program like Paint, you'd be spending hours doing that. So I'm probably only going to do a couple layers of shading. I'm going to get a thicker yellow. I'm sort of going to offer up a highlight. For the sword's blade here, uh, we're sort of going to use the same technique that I showed you guys earlier, except we're going to have to make our lines very straight. We're going to do so with the line tool here. And pretty much you'll just go across the blade, placing these lines here. And we can fill these in with color every once in a while. And the more contrast you're able to put into your shades of gray here, the better. Like say I want to go from that shade of gray to this black here. And it's simply up to you however you want to do this. I'm sort of going to try and follow what I did the first time I did this. And we're going to try and get a couple different shades of gray to add to our color palette. Just so we have a lot more contrast and gradients. Pretty much I'm just doing a lot of improvisation on where these... Uh, different shades are. I'm not a sword expert, so it's probably not right or realistic at all, but I'm not really going for realistic drawing, in case you guys haven't noticed. Too dark for sword. So, we're going to work on making these shades a little bit brighter. Especially here. And probably up here. Taking out a lot more of those darker colors, and putting in some lighter colors. That looks pretty good for Brick's sword. We're going to continue working on all the metal parts. Pretty much we're going to use that same technique. Nothing too fancy, but it looks cool from a distance because up close, nothing looks really that good up close. So I'm working on my drawing and I notice that I have an overlapping shadow from the neck here and you want to make sure that you somewhat include that into your drawing. See we got the shadow of the neck coming down here and then from that point we're going to take our darker color, darker shade of that gray and we're going to draw a line and fill that in following that same line. We're going to have that come around there too. That helps your light stay continuous in your drawing. A little bit better and want to make sure that we're consistent with that all the way across and as you can see I've done quite a lot to these armor plates but I still have quite a long ways to go before I'm actually done uh, it is a rather time-consuming process but I'm pretty sure by the time I get this done it's gonna look 
pretty awesome. Oh, I've been working on this drawing for a long time, but I'm not done yet. I've got a couple more spots to shade in, and a couple more minor details to include into my drawing before I stop. And we're going to add these lines here just to make these spots darker a little bit. And on these plates, I was planning on having a symbol for the army that Brick is in. So we're going to start by drawing a triangle, going upwards, and we're going to have the line coming across there. Second triangle here. And I'm doing this with my mouse, so bear with me. Each of these triangles are going to be colored yellow. And my whole goal for these plates here was to make them seem like they were transparent. So on this line here, I'm going to take my white. Sort of going to streak across this. Make it look like the line's hardly there. And it sort of makes it look like the AUS symbol is underneath of that line there. That looks good. And finally, after a couple hours or one hour, I don't even know how long I've been working on this, but I finally got this thing done. Um, the longest part about it was the lines I had to make for all the shiny armor parts. Everything else was pretty easy, just those armor parts to make them look like that was so time consuming. But I would say this looks pretty awesome, but I'm not quite done yet. I'm going to add the little bit of that background I had before, uh, just with a couple lines here. And I'm not going to spend too much time on the background. There's a lot of stuff you can do, but I just chose to do this real quickly. And we're going to do our final save as. We're going to call this one Final. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind about a bitmap file is that you can't really upload it to any sites as it is because of how massive it is. So you might want to save it as a, another copy as a JPEG. Now, this does get rid of a lot of the quality. So I can zoom in here and show you these lines here. In JPEG form, you can no longer edit your drawing. So it's a good idea to keep that uh, bitmap before you save it as a JPEG. Or you can hit undo and try again. The advantages of coloring digitally like I have done for a drawing I made by hand is that you can have professional looking even colors for some of your drawings. For this style, it was sort of uh, like an anime because of the sharp shadows and shading. A um, couple tips whenever you're coloring digitally like this is that you want to make sure that your shadows on your surfaces are consistent, as you can see across the cloak and across various surfaces, even to his hair. I kept the shadow uh, going across all the different colors and not just certain colors. You need to make sure that your lines are smooth um, up close you can definitely tell that there's a couple of problems and areas where I messed up but from this distance it looks really really clean and I like the result but I don't like looking up up close because it just gets too messy so definitely try and clean your drawing up a bit if you have a bunch of mess ups like I had whenever I first started just get rid of those with the select tool and delete and pretty much just experiment with it. There's a lot of stuff you can do, and there's a couple other programs that you can actually do this with. Photoshop, uh, Illustrator, a bunch of other stuff. I'm starting to learn how to use Photoshop to do it, because Photoshop offers a wider range of uh, coloring possibilities. But this is how you color with paint. Hope you guys like this video. You should subscribe if you like the video, because I'm planning on making even more tutorials going over my drawing technique with Photoshop or anything else coloring digitally just a bunch of other how to draw basic stuff and even how to draw video game characters check out some of my other videos uh, on my channel check out some more drawings on Devent art so you can compare this one to the colored pencil and uh, until next time keep on drawing <laughs>